Greetings. Welcome to this NPTEL course on microsensors, implantable devices and rodent surgeries for biomedical applications. In this course, you will be learning about electrodes that can be manufactured to be implanted on the brain. By brain, I mean rodent brains which will be later translated for humans. And with how we can use these electrodes uh, via, via surgeries to acquire biopotentials such as uh, ECOG signals, electrocorticography which is uh, under the skull, which is uh, signals coming from under the skull from the brain or EEGs and ECGs. Uh, specifically, we will focus on brain, so EEG and ECOG and how these using these electrode potentials we can determine uh, the activities or the local field potentials of the brain. Now, once we uh, determine how the uh, electrodes are implanted and how they can conduct the biopotentials, we need something that can translate these uh, values into uh, user-friendly user, uh, user information, you could say, so that uh, we as researchers or we as um, uh, me medical professionals can understand what is happening exactly. So, this is where I come into and uh, in this uh, lecture you will learn about how to make an electronic system which can acquire these biopotentials specifically uh, by, uh, uh, brain signal acquisition and also stimulate the brain for uh, various applications. So, uh, I am Kaushik, a research assistant at uh, BEES lab at Indian Institute of Science and uh, in this lecture I will be taking you through the uh, design considerations that you can take while designing such an electronic system. I focus on electronics and this is where my uh, forte lies and uh, I will make my best to make you understand um, uh, how to uh, approach a design or approach an electronic design uh, in whatever applications that you are looking for. Uh, and in this we will specifically look for uh, neuro uh, and biomedical applications. So, I have divided this uh, lecture into three small chunks so that it will be easy for uh, uh, you as uh, viewers to understand. Those are design considerations, circuit design and system development. By design considerations, uh, we will be looking at uh, various um, techniques uh, that we can use um, for uh, uh, de designing a circuit in general, whether they may be using development boards or integrated circuits in a PCB or whether they can be in a normal blood board itself, uh, those kinds of design considerations and what will be the chips uh, that we can use to uh, design such a circuit. In a circuit design, uh, once we have chosen the design, how do we go around designing the peripherals for the circuit? How will we uh, uh, control the uh, chips that we have determined for the circuit? Uh, those things will come around in circuit design where we interface these components together. In system development, we will be looking at how to make a PCB for this and a schematic in an electronic uh, design automation uh, tool um, so that we can translate it professionally onto a printed, printed circuit board and encase it completely. I uh, will give you a simple analogy, let us say we want to design an automated LED or a LED that can be controlled via sound or something like that. So, in design consideration we will be looking at what kind of LED do we need or what kind of uh, light do we need, do we go for halogen or something like that. So, once we determine what kind of LED we need, we will be looking at circuit design on how to interface it with other components. How do we power this LED up, do we directly connect it to the power supply or do we um, use a switch in between or something like that. Uh, this is a very simple analogy and uh, how do we interface it with sensors in between and uh, everything else. Uh, how do we uh, control the current through it, constant current supply, constant voltage supply, all those kinds of things. And in system development, we will be translating it into a PCB design. So, this is the overall flow on how we will go through this course and I hope that you will be able to understand and translate it onto uh, your applications as well. So, what are we going to learn in design considerations? Uh, we will uh, look at some questions such as what is the end goal of the system or the what is the purpose of the system and how do we go on about achieving this result. 
uh, what are the components that we need to select in order to achieve those results and how are they involved in the system. And finally, how do we select the components? What parameters should the components have? And these are all the questions we will answer in this module. So, what is the purpose of the system? In a single sentence, it is to bridge the gap between the brain and the user. As we see uh, in this topic of uh, NPTEL course, we are saying about uh, rat brain uh, or rodents in general. Uh, before moving on to uh, uh, human brains, we have to uh, uh, prove the theory in uh, rat brains, hence uh, focusing on rodent models. And the objective is to de develop the system for mainly two things. One is acquiring signals from the brain and it would not be directly from the brain, there will be electrodes that are implanted in the brain and you would have learnt in uh, the modules on how we uh, develop uh, electrodes that are implanted in the brain. And the second objective is how do we stimulate the brain and uh, as my colleague Srinivas would have told, uh, we have uh, developed a PCB for stimulation of the brain um, uh, with the parameters that can be varied. Uh, in simpler sentences, uh, we can uh, divide it into two uh, main objectives. One is for acquisition of signals from the brain and stimulation of the brain. As you can see, this is a rat's brain uh, and the system which is yet to be developed. Uh, before we developed, I have put it as a black box which we will be looking into. Uh, we will have to accommodate. Um, uh, at a very small size such that the rat moves freely and this uh, has to uh, be done in real time. So, the system will bridge the electrodes and the user uh, thus uh, uh, providing information uh, after acquisition of the signal and also it bridges the other way around between the user and the brain by providing stimulation pulses according to the input. This uh, two way communication will be done uh, uh, with uh, various modules that we will be attaching to the system uh, for uh, co completing the overall picture. When we talk about a system, we need to uh, design, uh, uh, decide certain properties of the system before we uh, go ahead with the system. Planning is key, thus uh, I have taken a simple example here before we uh, look into the uh, acquisition and simulation system for rats. Let us take a very simple system from a daily scenario. Uh, for example, uh, let us say an automated irrigation system. So, in that what are the inputs that we need? Uh, in a system uh, such as this, there will be sensors which will uh, take certain parameters such as temperature humidity and these inputs have to be processed and usually in systems such as these, we will set a threshold and if a threshold is crossed, we will provide outputs such as watering the plants and controlling motors for those purposes. This is a very a uh, generic system that I have taken here. But when we come to the system the, uh, that we are looking at here, stimulation and acquisition of signals from a rat's brain or a rodent's brain, uh, these are the user inputs and outputs that are required. So, this is the overall concept model that I have placed at the bottom and uh, you can see that this system is placed uh, in, a, in a backpack system, backpack, backpack manner. Uh, and it communicates wirelessly with the GUI and there are stimulation pulses that have to be given from the user via the GUI to the rat and based on the pulses or at any given time, we have to also acquire the signals as output wirelessly to the GUI. And uh, you can see uh, here a small video based on uh, rat's behavior. Uh, this is done at the central animal facility in the institute and uh, we have uh, ethical clearance for the surgery 
and uh, post surgery you can see that there is a uh, interface board uh, above the rat i also have the interface board in hand uh, if you can see here this interface board here is what is on the uh, placed uh, uh, post surgery above the rat and using this cable here that you can see we can acquire the signals using uh, several systems and this board you see here is the stimulation setup that my colleague Srinivas explained and I have it physically here but here we will focus on something else because uh, we are doing both stimulation and acquisition so the process have to be several not just stimulation but as um, as we saw in previous modules we have to send the pulses with the modifiable parameters to the electrodes that are implanted on the rat's brain and it also has to wirelessly communicate and display the information in the GUI. Wireless communication is key here uh, as it is a wireless system and uh, it has to be battery powered of course as wired uh, power is not possible in our case. So we will plan our system accordingly to facilitate all these uh, properties of the system. Now when it comes to a system we have to choose the uh, right components for the system and uh, as a beginner I would uh, suggest people to use development boards that are available uh, commercially everywhere. Development boards contain uh, microcontrollers along with peripherals. inbuilt in them and it is just plug and play you can plug it into your system and you can connect the required peripherals and you can um, uh, execute whatever operation that you desire and these development boards uh, come up with their own trade offs such as uh, so most of the times we lack the uh, resolution of the ADC uh, what I mean by this is that the information uh, that we get may not be accurate and uh, the, when converting analog signals in our case biopotentials uh, it may get lost due to the low resolution usual ADC resolution in the market are 10 bit or 12 bit ADCs and if the uh, boards uh, does not lack ADC they have a huge cost associated with it so it is a kind of a trade off. Uh, otherwise uh, rarely they also lack peripherals and this is one of the development boards that is av available commercially. This is uh, uh, provided by a platform called OpenBCI, Open Brain Computer Interface. Uh, this is a board called Cyton. They also have uh, previous boards uh, associated with them called Ganglion and others. The Cyton board uh, is a development board especially for biopotential measurement by biopotential I mean uh, ECG or uh, EEG, EMG and other stuffs. and uh, this contains a 32 bit PIC microcontroller, PIC is a microcontroller by microsystems and uh, they have a, a, a dedicated um, uh, uh, a dedicated uh, Texas instrument chip ADS1299 it has uh, inbuilt uh, uh, processing for measuring weak signals associated with generally uh, brain signals and it has a resolution of 24 bit which is always good. The more resolution ha you have the, more, the better the signal information that you get and it also has wireless BLE transmission inbuilt uh, otherwise we can also write it onto SD card. These are the properties associated with it but as I told uh, it also has a huge cost which is generally uh, not sustainable. But this is one of the uh, boards that we have in hand and uh, we tried um, we have uh, made a system associated with it and it also includes a PSOC based system that can stimulate as I told this open VCI system has biopotential measurements which means it can only acquire signals and it can acquire 
up to 8 channels at a time which means that it can acquire up to uh, 8 electrodes in the brain. And this acquisition uh, is combined with the stimulation from the PESOC uh, based circuit that we have developed and uh, together uh, it, it makes a complete system of both electrical stimulation and recording. And uh, this stimulation was done for uh, deep brain stimulation uh, as mentioned by my colleague. Uh, in the PSOC uh, based stimulation system, we have uh, the microcontroller and it has a uh, property, uh, it has a peripheral which can uh, constantly source or sync the current and using this property we have placed current mirroring blocks which can mirror the current. To the uninitiated uh, current mirroring block is uh, a circuit uh, usually based on transistor or MOSFET, here it is a MOSFET and uh, when uh, cur uh, current flows uh, on one uh, branch the same amount of current flows on the other branch to be very uh, generic this is a current mirroring circuit and the same is uh, replicated twice this is a, a kind of current mirroring circuit that does not get affected because of the load. And this has both uh, mm, positive and a negative pulse uh, uh, stimulation uh, uh, capability for a biphasic based uh, pulse uh, stimulation system. Now uh, as you can see this setup when we use uh, even though it has both acquiring and stimulation when it comes to uh, rad based models because as I told you earlier we have to move from rad uh, to uh, humans uh, on a um, step by step basis, we have to make this uh, feature size very small. Even though it may look uh, big for uh, human based biopotentials, uh, this is actually extremely huge for the rat. Uh, we can still work with this uh, by wiring it directly to the rat, but it restricts the movement. Hence, we need uh, this kind of a setup. This becomes essential. And this is where ASICs come into play, ASICs are application specific integrated circuits. And uh, when you uh, speak about ASICs, the uh, open VCA that I told about uses this ADS1299 chip by Texas Instruments and you can just use this uh, uh, to build your own uh, um, biopotential acquisition systems as well. The advantage of using ASIC is of course the feature size is extremely small and it also has the required ADC resolution. If you do not have the ADC resolution, this has a 24 bit ADC resolution, um, you can even attach external ADCs to it. Uh, and this has the necessary peripherals, this has 8 channels and you can even um, add on to it serially. As you can see here, this is free EG32 and they have used ADS1299. Uh, 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 in 4 chains to increase the channels to 32 channels. So, you, you can even work around with that. This has the same feature size as Cyton, but with multiple channels as well. And the import, most important thing is they have inbuilt stages in them. Uh, by inbuilt stages, I mean uh, there are even though there are extremely uh, large number of 24 bit ADCs available in the market, you need a certain set of stages to acquire these biopotentials as they are very weak. And uh, these are generally uh, pre amplifiers, then there are amplifiers after this, pre amplifiers remove the noise. Uh, in general and amplifiers uh, amplify the amplitude of the uh, noise removed signal. Then they go to the ADC and only then you get the digital output. This is just the um, uh, bear of the uh, stages involved in uh, uh, getting uh, biopotentials, but I encourage you to look into it. But uh, this is generally the case with the stages involved in it. And uh, these are all actually uh, inbuilt inside the uh, ASICs and of course uh, there is a huge cost involved in developing ASICs, but it is a one time cost involved. And uh, when we look at uh, ASICs, 
there is a, a particular uh, chip uh, that we were interested in uh, from Intent Technologies based in California. This is also uh, similar to ADS1299, but uh, they have a wide range of uh, channels um, that we talked about. Uh, as you can see here, there are uh, three H stages that they provide and uh, each uh, H stage is uh, different. This is these two belong to the RHD uh, family which is only for amplification. This belongs to the RHS family of chips which is both amplification, by amplification I mean stimulation and uh, sorry by amplification I mean acquisition and stimulation as well. So, uh, since this uh, RHS uh, 2116 uh, two, by 2116 uh, there are 16 electrodes or 16 channels uh, that can be amp uh, set as acquisition electrodes or stimulation electrodes according to the user. And uh, since this has this capability, uh, we will be focusing on Inten uh, Technologies RSS2116 in this uh, module. And this is the chip we will be focusing on. And in RHS2116, this is the um, uh, circuit from the data sheet. Uh, they have, uh, as I told you, 16 channels which will go to the electrodes that are implanted in the brain and each of the electrodes can be set as acquisition or amplification and stimulation. So, uh, this, uh, some of the features of this is that um, other than uh, the 16 channels is that uh, they can go uh, up to a wide range of stimulation current and uh, according to the user uh, going from 10 nanoamperes to 2.5, 2.5 milliamperes and the acquisition speed is uh, fast at uh, 60 kilo samples per second and when we design this circuit we have to take this into account because our microcontroller from this has to acquire uh, 50 kilo samples per second and this is very crucial for our microcontroller. And the mode of communication between the chip and our controller will be um, either 32 bit SPI 4 wire uh, or it will be a 8 wire uh, differential signaling SPI. And uh, again this has uh, electrode impedance measurement inside inbuilt in it as I told you the pre uh, the all the stages are inbuilt inside the Intentech chip. So now that we have seen the features of the RHS2116, uh, uh, after this we will be working around with this chip for our circuit design as well as system development. And uh, to conclude this uh, lecture, I will give you a brief summary on what we have seen so far. We have established the objective for our uh, overall system. We are making a device for stimulation and acquisition of uh, brain signals, ECOG signals and other biopotentials. We have to make it a wireless system that is of course battery powered since it is a standalone system and it has to be of a small footprint so that we can establish for rodent uh, based models. And after that we went uh, through the design approach where we can either use development boards that are available on the market directly or an ASIC based design where we have specific integrated chips that can measure biopotentials like the ADS1299 or the RHS2116. In specific, we looked at RHS2116 by Intent Technologies and how its uh, features and system are beneficial for us, especially the fact that it can acquire and stimulate at the same time in 16 electrode channels. So, in the next lecture, we will be going forward with uh, RHS2116. Furthermore, I will explain to you in detail the internal um, mechanisms of RHS2116 as I told you they have all uh, stages inbuilt into them like the pre-amplifiers and uh, how do they switch between stimulation and acquisition and uh, we will be working around with that further to develop a complete circuit. So far if you have any queries 
please uh, feel free to reach out in our forum. We will do our best to answer those questions as much as possible. And uh, uh, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.